My name is Vanessa Martinez Lagunas, and I am the head coach of the University of Manitoba in Winnipeg, Canada. Um, our school is uh, an urban school. We have um, about 30,000 students, so definitely we're one of the biggest universities in Canada. Um, our campus vibe is very friendly and inclusive. Uh, and something that makes us very unique is that um, our um, quality cost relationship is very good. It's probably one of the best in Canada, uh, which means that um, it's still one of the most affordable universities in the country um, with excellent quality of education. Uh, and we are part of the top 15 universities in Canada. In addition to what I mentioned about the quality uh, and cost relationship, I think another unique um, aspect of the university is the amazing facilities we have on campus. Um, we have the former uh, FIFA Women's World Cup Stadium that was used here when we hosted um, the championship. Um, we hosted all the games of the U.S. national team, the group games. So. Um, we have the stadium here, the Investors Group Field Stadium, so it's a, a wonderful uh, and beautiful stadium and our team gets to play one of our home games there, uh, which is amazing, right? So our, our players get to play at the same venue where some of the best players in the world played in the World Cup in 2015, um, so definitely that's a, a big plus. Um, and in addition to that, we have uh, also a brand new Active Living Center that won several architecture and design prizes in North America. And that's where our uh, athletes train for strength and conditioning. Uh, so that's also a, a beautiful, beautiful facility. Um, we have a combination of both. Um, so we definitely have many that live on campus and also many that live off campus and commute to, to the school. So I will say it's a combination of both. So in terms of rankings, you know, like the top academic programs at the university, um, they are environmental design in the School of Architecture, uh, School of Arts and Global Political Economy. And in terms of um, also high quality programs, but the most common ones among our team are uh, kinesiology, engineering and business. Okay. Um, and what are the academic requirements to get into Manitoba? It really depends on the program that each athlete is interested in. Um, so it depends if they want to apply to direct entry, entry or if they want to apply to our general program, which is called University One. Um, for University One, the minimum requirement is 70% average uh, with five full grade, uh, full grade 12 credits and a minimum of 60% in English. Um, if they want direct entry, the requirements vary by program, but the minimum average um, is 85%. And of course, you know, the, the programs are very competitive. So usually for them to have a chance, they have to have, you know, very high averages, but the minimum is 80, 85. Um, and then what kind of support is there for the athletes? So do you have tutoring? Do they get to register for class early? Like what sort of things? Um, yeah, just on the academic side, the support. Yes. Um, so I guess one of the biggest supports we offer them is early class registration, uh, which is huge because imagine the university has 30,000 students and only about 300 student athletes. Um, so all our athletes get to, to register first so that they can arrange their classes schedule based on our training schedule. And we also give them the schedule a year in advance. So they, they know uh, when we will be training all year round uh, and it's easier for them to organize their classes schedule accordingly. Uh, also, they get access, you know, to um, the best professors, the best um, times because they are the first ones to register. Uh, and also we offer a program called Bison Plus, academic program, which is a, a very specific program for student athletes where they get um, advisors um, that work exclusively with them and are very well educated about, you know, the uh, requirements for athletes and academics. Um, so, yeah, basically those are the two main 
main supports we give them. And then also some programs um, do say the most important thing is to first make sure that um, the university or university has the program the academic program that they are interested in um, that they make contact with admissions um, because definitely they are the experts you know in, in in the specifics of the program that they might be interested in and then after they make contact with me I can also refer them to the specific Bison Plus academic advisor that could give them even more specific information um, for um, the population of student athletes. In terms of tuition and fees, um, the average tuition for the year here in Manitoba is about $4,000, which as I mentioned at the beginning is one of the most affordable schools. Um, you know, I've heard of schools in Ontario and BC that uh, cost double this amount, 8,000 and up. Um, so definitely that's a, a huge, huge advantage here in Manitoba. We still have uh, some government help um, so that students uh, don't have to bear um, the whole cost, cost of, of tuition by themselves. So there is still some government support and that's why we're still so affordable. Um, difference if they are from here or outside of the province, um, the main difference will be the cost of, of living residence. Um, and, and that cost varies depending if they want to live on campus or off campus. Um, there are some programs where they can live with families, uh, which is probably the most, um, the most or the cheapest option. Um, it costs about $700 um, dollars per month or even uh, we can find cheaper options as well. Um, if they want to live in residence, uh, for the whole year, it varies also, but um, on average, it's about $8,000 for our athletes. So just to be clear then, so that the, like it's 4000 a year, whether you're from Newfoundland, BC, Manitoba, that's the tuition for the year? Yes, yes. So it's for all Canadians, no matter what province they come from. Wow, that's really that's yeah. a very good price. Yeah. <laughs> It's really, really good. And, you know, maybe if I can add there, um, especially because we also have many athletes that look at the option of the U.S., um, you know, this is, uh, you know, in terms of the cost is so different, right? Um, mm -hmm. Because $4,000 per year compared to, I don't know, it can get up to 20, 30,000, 40,000 U.S. dollars just um, for for school, I think is, is a huge, huge difference, right? And um, definitely, if they can get you know a top quality education here plus soccer at this price, um, you know it's just very important that they know all the specifics on, on the financial side of things, um, so that their family or their parents and and, and the student athlete them, uh, herself understands exactly what the costs are. The costs are. Um, we definitely offer athletic scholarships um, and uh, they range between $500 to full tuition and fees. Um, so yeah, definitely. So it depends on, on, on um, each player, right? The characteristics, characteristics of each player, but we do offer those scholarships. Um, in terms of academic and non-athletic scholarships, um, they, uh, we also offer many, many of them. Um, so it will be very difficult to list each one of them, but um, the, the two main ones that we have are entrance scholarships and leadership scholarships. Entrance scholarships are really, really important because um, basically they don't have to apply for them. If they get an average uh, between 85 and 89.9, it's um, tier one and all the students that qualify for these, you know, that they have a high school average between these ranges, they receive automatically $1,000. Uh, no questions asked. Um, of course, they only have to uh, meet the requirement that that average is across five uh, grade 12 courses. And there is a, a very specific list um, listed in the view book, um, the University of Manitoba view book on page 26 and 28. Um, so uh, students can see what are the courses that are considered and um, if they get 90 to 94.9, they get $2,000 
and if they get uh, 95 and above, they get $3,000 and that's almost 75% of their tuition, right? Which is a huge help. Plus whatever they um, can get from for the athletic scholarship, they can almost cover uh, their full tuition um, through the two of them, the athletic and the academic or non-athletic scholarships. Um, so I will suggest, you know, to all the athletes or uh, student athletes that are interested in our university to look for the University of Manitoba view book. They can just um, search for it at the University of Manitoba website and then uh, read in a lot of detail pages 26 and 28 because all the information is there or even they can just Google University of Manitoba scholarships and they will find the website where all of them are listed with all the requirements, deadlines, etc. Um, I have been at the university, University of Manitoba now for seven years or seven seasons, full seasons. Um, you know, we have been um, working really hard and we have shown huge improvements since 2013 uh, until now. Um, every year we have achieved something we had not achieved before. Um, and we have been, um, you know, going up the rankings. Um, so last year we had the best, um, the best team record in the past 12 years, which is, you know, huge, huge improvement for us. Also, many of our athletes now have been selected to um, the all Canadian teams, you know, both at the conference and youth sports level. Um, so definitely we're showing great improvement. Um, a little bit of my background, is that I am a former player of the Mexican national team. I had the opportunity to play at the university level um, in Mexico and in the US. I played for the University of Texas at Austin um, during my university uh, years. I also played, as I said, in Mexico for the, um, I guess, most successful university uh, team. Um, also consider a dynasty in Mexico called Tec de Monterrey, Campus Monterrey. And then after my years in Texas, I moved to Germany where I had the opportunity to play professional um, at the Bundesliga level, the first league and second league. Um, and then of course, through all that experience, you know, and, and, and having the opportunity to play at the highest level, I know exactly what is required uh, to get there, um, what you have to go through as a player, also, um, during my whole career, I never had a female coach, you know, and um, in Mexico, in the U.S. and in Germany, which, you know, all three countries are, you know, very good countries in, in, in the women's game. And I was very, very, um, you know, surprised that uh, I could not see women in coaching. Um, so one of my questions at some point was if women could become coaches, because I had never seen that, or seen one um, so it really motivated me to get into it, um, to show that we women can um, be or get into this beautiful profession and be successful, uh, because I think uh, young girls uh, need that example. You know, they need role models to look up to and, and realize that they can also do that. Um, so that's one of my big motivations. And of course, I I, I am big in, in helping women to get into coaching. So I see when uh, many of our players or some of our players have, you know, the interest first and the talent second for it. I definitely mentor them um, and guide them through the process, how they can get into the profession. Um, you know, I'm happy to say that um, one of our former captains uh, is now working with the Canadian national teams. Her name is Chloe Worley. Uh, she was our captain for three years. Um, you know, I help her out a little bit in terms of um, uh, the direction she wanted to take. Um, we also made a trip to Texas, my former school. So we took Manitoba to the University of Texas at Austin. And then she had the opportunity to meet there with the strength and conditioning coach of Texas, who was a, a female coach uh, then. And she got super interested and she told me, Vanessa, I have found what I want to do. I want to become a strength and conditioning coach and, and make my living for it and a sports scientist in, in soccer. And that's exactly what she's doing now. And she works with all the youth national teams and then now even the full national team 
and she's traveling the world, right? So um, it's a great example. And, and we have another upcoming uh, amazing coach. Her name is Bruna. She's from Brazil. I also uh, think she's going to become one of the best in, in the area. And uh, we're support, supporting her as much as we can um, so that she can keep learning and getting experience. Um, so in terms of our team, um, we have probably one of the best um, coaching and support staffs in the country here in Canada. Um, I have been very careful in, you know, selecting that and building that staff. Um, I am myself a sports scientist and I hold the highest uh, coaching license in the world, which is called the UEFA Pro License. Basically, this license qualifies you to um, coach a national team or a professional team, either on the men's or women's side. Um, and with the combination of sports science, I always wanted to um, you know, build a really strong staff that could provide players not only technical support, but also um, you know, support in areas of sports science, such as uh, sports nutrition, sports psychology, strength and conditioning. Um, so we have built a staff where one of our assistant coaches, for example, is William Rosales. Um, he's also a former national team player from El Salvador and has the Canadian um, National B license. So also a very high qualified coach with a lot of experience, many, many years of experience. Um, in sports psychology, we have one of the best um, professors uh, here at the university uh, in the area of sports psychology who's working with our team. Also, we work with Dr. Uh, Dean Krillers, who is considered one of the uh, world experts in um, physical literacy and um, durability, just helping athletes, you know, not only be good during their athletic years or when they are competing, but also for life. I think, you know, we look not only at the short term, but the long term. Um, and then we also have a sports nutrition and uh, we work with one of the best sports dietitians uh, here in, in the province and potentially Canada. So as you can see, it's a very well-rounded staff. Uh, also some former players, as I mentioned, Bruna is also helping us in the strength and conditioning area. Uh, she has a master's uh, degree in kinesiology, has taken also several of my coaching courses and, and um, she, she will be a, an up and uh, coming young coach uh, that I hope uh, can get to the national team or professional level in the future as well. Wow, that's amazing. I didn't know you had a UEFA pro license. That's incredible. You got to be one of the only coaches in the country or like very few coaches in Canada have one, right? Actually, um, I am the only one in Canada with the UEFA pro license. Um, and there are probably in the whole world, just imagine this, in the whole world there are uh, less than 150 women with, uh, with the UEFA Pro license. Um, so we're a very small percentage, you know, the whole population. Um, it's a very, very demanding course. It takes a full year. Um, and I did it through the German Federation, which is one of the most prestigious um, coaching academies in the world. Wow. How many languages do you speak, just out of curiosity? <laughs> I speak uh, three fluent languages, and um, so Spanish, my, my native language, uh, English, uh, German, of course, and I also speak a little bit of French, which um, I really want to, to improve on. So during this time, you know, of quarantine, I'm, I'm trying to learn more of, of French as well. The three words that I will choose to describe our program are passion, development, and excellence. Um, I am a very passionate coach. Um, you know, I, uh, I love the game. I grew up in Mexico, so everything we do um, or yeah, think about is soccer. Basically, we eat, dream, and, uh, and live from the sport. Um, and development, it's huge for me because um, that, that's kind of my life philosophy, you know, that you can always get better and I am always hungry to learn more. Um, and I try to pass that on to our players. Um, you, no matter what they do on or off the field, I always want to teach them to want to get better and to try to reach or get something they have not achieved before. And as I said, you know, we have seen that in our program development from year one, 2013 to 2000, 
uh, 19 last year. Every year we have achieved something that the program had not achieved before, and that's very difficult to do. Uh, very difficult to do, and I, I, I definitely think that we will become one of the best um, women's soccer programs in Canada. Um, so definitely watch out, right? And then if you want to be part of it, um, definitely come, come and be part of it. Uh, be one of the pioneers that are going to bring this program to the top. Um, we have a very, um, I will describe our, our playing style as an attractive and attacking playing style, attacking playing style with a very solid defensive foundation. Um, again, because of my um, heritage, right, uh, Latin American heritage, I love attacking uh, soccer, attacking football, uh, possession oriented, um, creative, uh, based on creativity. Uh, we are not married to one formation, um, so basically we're very versatile. And I teach our athletes to get comfortable with different systems um, and also with different positions. Um, so it takes a long time, um, but I think it's great for their development. And um, again, I really care about their development, not only on the field, but also off the field. And I also try to teach them for life, not only for the game. Um, we're a full year program, uh, so basically um, during the season we train um, three to four times per week depending on our game schedule, um, two hours each time, um, usually in the afternoons, right after, after uh, classes end is when we train, um, and then we have two games per weekend, so that's definitely demanding, you know, in Canada we play back to back, so it could be a Friday and Saturday or a Saturday and Sunday. Um, so it's definitely demanding during the whole competitive season, which goes from September all the way to mid-November, um, depending how far the team gets. And then in the off season that, again, I don't like to call it off season, I call it preparation period. For us is from January to May. Um, we also train about three to four times per week, two hours uh, each time. Um, and in both periods, we always have um, uh, frequent, or not frequent, but consistent sessions on the uh, sports science pillars of the game. So we also have sports nutrition, sports psychology, uh, strength and conditioning throughout the whole year. So not only you know in one portion or once a year or twice a year, it's uh, consistent and um, the girls get that support all year round. And also we do lots of, um, uh, video sessions and tactical sessions, especially during the competitive season. In terms of our roster, um, last year we had 29 players and they all came from everywhere, right? Because I recruit at three different levels. I recruit at the local, um, at national and at the international level. Um, so if you look at, uh, if you take a look at our roster last year, we had um, players from all over Canada, basically from coast to coast, in addition to all our local players. Um, we had players from Nova Scotia all the way to BC um, or British Columbia. And we also had several international students coming from the USA, from Colombia, from India. Um, also, uh, previously, um, one of our athletes, as I mentioned, just graduated and uh, she was, she's from Brazil, Bruna. Um, she was one of our top scorers, and now she has stayed with our team as one of our staff members, which is great, right, for her development. Um, yes, I like to uh, sub players often when I can, and of course, um, I always look to, to get a roster that is um, very uniform, you know, in terms of, of skill, so that we can definitely do that. And, um, you know, if the girls earn it, they play. I definitely like players that are technical, that are smart, that are creative, um, but I, I also pay um, a lot of attention to their fitness, overall fitness, uh, because I think that at our level, um, that is crucial for success. So if they are not fit, they can, be, they can have the best technique or the best uh, vision of the game, but if they are not fit, they cannot make it to our level, or at least they cannot survive in our environment. Um, so definitely, I think, Fitness will be the base, right? So they have to have it. All of them have to have that. That's for me a requirement um, that is, is given, you know, that is expected. 
Um, and then, of course, they start uh, calling my eye even more if they are fit and then they are technical, creative, you know, they, they have a great vision of the game and um, also mentally, you know, that they are strong, they, they are winners, um, they never give up, uh, they are coachable. All those things, um, character overall is very important for us when we recruit players. So I recruit players through a combination of all the methods that you have mentioned. Um, but definitely whatever the method is, uh, one of the crucial elements is for them to come to one of our junior bison sessions or ID camps. Um, I think it's crucial for both sides, right? So I, I usually, I have never recruited a player that I haven't seen or met in person yet. Um, I, I am big on that, you know, because um, I want to be fair to the player and I want to be fair to our program as well. And I always want to make sure we are a good fit. You know, I want to make sure that they see the university, they come to a campus visit, they see what we have to offer. And also I get to meet the person, you know, not only the player or what I see on a video, on a recruiting video or on a, or a CV um, or player profile. Um, I want to meet the person and I want to see them here live. I want to see them um, or give them the opportunity as well to meet us, to meet our coaching staff, to meet our current squad um, so that, that they get to feel our culture and really leave it for those days that they are here. And then um, that's how we can both sides see we are a good fit. And so far that has been great for us. Um, and, you know, we have a, a, an amazing group of athletes that have the same objective and we are all working for the same objective to become one of the best programs in the country. And um, our team chemistry and unity is phenomenal. You know, it, it's a family. I call this a Bison family. And if you want to be part of it, um, of course, you uh, need to contact me first, right? I think that's the first uh, step. Uh, my email is very easy. It's lagunas at humanitova.ca. Um, you can contact me. You can also go to our website, uh, gobisons.ca, and look for women's soccer. And then there you can find on the recruitment, you can find a recruiting uh, form or a recruiting, uh, yeah, just a recruiting profile, recruiting form that you need to fill out. Um, send it to me, and that will be the first step. And then after that, I'll guide uh, I'll guide you through the process of, you know, when to make your visit uh, and then go from there. It's a video, of course, you know, we're extremely busy. You know, we, we, it will be the chances for us to watch a full game are very, very low because we just don't have the time. We would love to do it, but we don't have the time. Um, so definitely if you send video, um, you know, it, sh it should be short, you know, it should be um, really showing the different aspects um, of your position. Um, so not, not only show one aspect. So for example, if you're a, an attacker, I don't only want to see you scoring goals. I also want to see you working in defense, right? How hard do you work? Do you know how to position yourself? Things like that. So cover the four phases of the game, basically the attacking, the defense, and the transitions. Um, I think that that's very important for us. And then... Um, differentiate yourself, right? So um, email, email the coach, make sure that you're on top of things. Sometimes we're extremely busy and we might miss emails or we might not be able to get back to you. But if you are perseverant and you're like, oh, coach, uh, you know, I sent you an email this and um, a few weeks ago, I haven't heard from you. I'm just wondering, you know, if, if you have seen these, um, here is my form. So I think that we look for proactive players, you know, and, and we want to see that you are interested in our program, that you really want to be part of it. And, and definitely that will call our attention and will differentiate you from the rest. First of all, to stay calm. You know, people, <laughs> that, <laughs> people that get very, very uh, anxious, um, you know, they, they paralyze rather than act. Yeah. I think they need to stay calm. Um, they need to keep working on, uh, first of all, finishing their school properly, you know, finish with good grades. And um, I will suggest them to really focus on the schools they are interested in. You know, like if they are working in a hundred schools, it will be impossible, right? So uh, choose three to five maximum, right? The ones that you really, really are interested in and focus on that. Build a relationship with the coach. Make sure that um, the coach gets to know you. Um, and again, wait for the 
um, opportunity, you know, when that comes, you, we don't know when that will come, um, so that you can meet that coach in person. I think there is nothing you cannot change meeting somebody in person than just meeting the person over a video or over a player profile. Um, you know, when you come to a university is a decision for, you know, four to five years, depending if you go to the US or you come to Canada, you can play for us five years here of eligibility. Um, so it's a big decision for the player and it's a big decision for the program as well. So I want to make sure we are a good fit. Um, so um, differentiate yourself, I said that. Um, send videos that are short, that are clear, that show all, all four phases of the game. And again, be perseverant. If you don't hear back right away, try again until you hear back from, from us. Um, and again, understand that we are uh, extremely busy. Sometimes we get you know, hundreds of emails and it's very hard to filter them. Um, so again, we pay attention to the girls that persevere, are proactive and really show extreme interest in our program. You know, the earlier, the better. That's what I can say. Um, so I get to meet girls. So all our sessions and camps are open for as early as 10 year olds, right? And um, I start getting to know them. I start getting to know the family. They get to know our culture. In terms of, um, you know, verbal recruit, uh, verbal commitments, uh, we start making them in grade 10, grade 11, you know? Um, and official commitments to start in grade 12. Um, so for example, our 2020 class sign um, officially in at the beginning of their grade 12. So in Canada, we can sign them officially uh, September 1st of their grade 12 year. Um, so our 2021 class will sign officially for September 1st of this year. And many of them committed, you know, in grade 10 um, or uh, even during this grade 11 year as well. So um, the earlier, the better. The earlier I know about you, the earlier I can save a spot for you. Definitely our program is um, getting a lot of interest, you know, from players, not only from um, here, from Manitoba, but from all over Canada and all over the world. Um, I also forget, uh, forgot to mention that I do some work for uh, FIFA, for uh, CONCACAF, and I have work also for UEFA, and I have taught courses all over the world. So basically I've been in over 40 countries uh, teaching coaches, um, you know, how to coach in the women's game. And of course, um, that, that, um, that work has allowed me to make contacts all over the world. Um, so definitely, you know, I have players, you know, from, you know, uh, Australia to India that want to play here. And, um, you know, it's very competitive. So every time is more competitive. And the earlier you get to uh, get here and I get to know you, the more chances you have to call my attention. Definitely, I also take more cons. So of course, they have to be a good fit for the program. Um, and they all have to follow the same, the same uh, process. Basically, the most important thing is that I get to know them, right? That if they are from here, they come to uh, as many camps as they can, right? So that I can get to know them. If they are not from here, at least one, you know, it's crucial in their uh, grade nines, grade 10s, grade 11. Um, it's very important that I know them as early as possible, um, just to evaluate their chances to make, uh, make it to our program. Maybe one more thing that I forgot to mention, um, you know, while I was in Germany, um, working on my um, UEFA courses, my coaching courses, I also had the chance to work for two years and a half with the under 16 and under 17 German national teams. I was an assistant coach, um, so definitely I work at the highest level. I work with some of the players that are now part of the full national team, like Jennifer Maroshan, you know, that are some of the biggest uh, names right now in, in, in Germany, in the full national team, Sarah Debritz and all those guys. Um, so definitely I know what the requirement is, you know, to play at this level. Uh, also this past summer, I had the chance to be an assistant coach for the Mexican university national team, um, that participated in the world university games. And I think that's another, uh, very cool opportunity that, um, you know, girls need to know about. Um, if you play at the university level, um, you can be part 
of the World University Games, which are basically um, similar to the Olympic Games, you know, but um, these are for university students. And that's a really cool, cool opportunity. Uh, I had the opportunity to participate as a, as a player uh, in 2001 in Beijing. And that was, I can tell you, one of the best experiences I've ever had. Um, and finally, um, an advice that I could give to them will be to share with them one of the quotes that has motivated me um, since I've been a player and now that I'm a coach, I try to, to share that quote with more younger players. Um, and that quote is from Anson Dorrance, probably you have heard of him, a uh, coach from the University of uh, North Carolina, one of the most successful coaches uh, in the women's game. And he wrote this quote for Mia Hamm when he saw her training on her own early in the morning at a, at a local park close to the university. And the quote says like this, um, the vision of a champion is someone who is bent over, drenched in sweat, at a point of exhaustion when no one else is watching. And I think that during these times, right, uh, that uh, we are in quarantine, all of us, um, I think that's uh, a really important quote to remember. Just keep working, you know, no matter who you are with, where you are at, keep doing your thing because um, your hard work will pay off uh, if you do that.